you got paperwork to fill out. And if you don't fill out the paperwork, your child goes on the truancy list. And they will take them from you and give those babies to a sexually confused couple to raise. Oh, y'all didn't know that? That the black kids are disproportionately given to the gay families because black people don't like adopting black kids. So because we want nothing to do with our homeless black kids, they give them to the gay people. Y'all didn't know that? Y'all don't see these black kids walking around with two white fathers and two white mothers and a white mom and a black mom? So we gotta stop that. If you can't be a foster parent, be an emergency care placement parent. I did my pre-doctoral internship in New Jersey, Trent. Dyfus. I was an intern for Dyfus. They break up families, Dyfus. Yes, they do. Yes. I know, I did a whole year with Dyfus. Psychological evaluations on kids who was taken from their parents for no good damn reason. Thank you. No, they don't know the laws. They don't, they don't know the laws. <laughs> Last committee. Oh, and I want my people downstairs to make sure that before y'all leave, my brothers and sisters downstairs watching me on TV, you make sure you sign the list. Better yet, y'all should start a list downstairs. Yes, sir. Name, phone number, email committee, special ed, finance, discipline, social, policy, homeschooling, and the last committee is parent advocacy. Yeah, you said that, I got that. That's Very what important. That's what I'm I have to train a group of you in this room to be advocates for other parents, because none of you should ever be going to a meeting by yourself for your child. Did you hear what I just said? I sure did. I am a school principal telling you that you should never go to a school meeting by yourself. Why am I saying that? Because schools will lie to you. They will manipulate you. They will bully you. They will intimidate you. And they will force you to do what you came in there not to do. You need a witness to every meeting. Black father, you too. I know you're not scared of the school. But if you go in there too strong, the white woman is going to say she felt threatened by you. And they're going to call the police. And you're going to be arrested just because you didn't want your son suspended. And you will be forbidden to ever enter that school again. Do you know how many black fathers right here in Newark can't even go pick up the child's report card because some racist ass white teacher who didn't want to answer to a black father lied and said he threatened her? You always need a witness. Because what do they do to you, black mother? They call you into school. We want to talk about Raheem's reading. We want to talk about Victoria's math. We want to talk about Johnny's inattention. We want to talk about his low test scores. And what do they do? They'll bring you into a room, and once you sit down, they bring 20 people into the damn meeting for one black mother. Wow. The principal, the principal intern, the vice principal, the reading coach, the nurse, the counselor, the social worker, the psychologist. The basketball coach, the bus driver, the floor sweeper, and the window washer. <laughs> Am I wrong? You right. And then they start ganging up on you, saying stuff like, we know Dr. Johnson was in Newark last night. And we know that he's an expert, but the man's a bit radical. And I've been teaching for 30 years. And although I'm white, I've been teaching for 30 years. I even taught you and your son got a reading disability and you need to listen to us and not Dr. Johnson. And then everybody starts ganging up on you, making you feel like a bad parent because you won't consent to crack the kids in the name of Riddler. And they start making you feel guilty. And you came in there to tell them that your son wasn't good on the going on drugs, but now you're so many people ganging up on you with bachelor's degrees and master's degrees that you start thinking yourself that you don't know what you're talking about. Black parent, never give your power over to the school. You are always the expert on your child. And just when they think they got you on the ropes, what do they do? Guess who comes into the room? When they think they got you where they want you? No. Queen Mother Kuji Chakalia from the Kwanzaa group. <laughs> They send in a Negro you trust. 
So here come Queen Mother Kuji Jacqueline with shea butter and incense. Uh, uh, and she talking about, she's the home and school person. And she say, baby, I know you. You used to come to our black history program. I love Dr. Umar too, but he's a little extreme. Listen, my grandson John John was on Ritalin. It wasn't that bad. He talks to himself every once in a while, but he's all right. Remember my other grandson, Melvin? He was on Concerta all his life. He's okay. Yeah, he get caught sleepwalking butt naked once in a while, but other than that, he's all right. And so now, you feel like you gotta listen to Queen Mother Kuji Chakalia, who's not a principal, not a psychologist, but makes you feel like she know what the hell she talking about. And then she says, if your son start having problems after taking this medicine, come back and find me. And baby girl, I'm gonna help you get him out. So a year go by, and John John talking to himself, he cross-eyed now and everything. You go back to the school, you can't find Queen Mother Kuji Chakalia. The white principal said, you ain't her? She packed up and moved to Ghana, opened up a shape by the back. <laughs> My point is, as I wrap this up, you can't trust nobody in the school. If they getting paid by the United States Department of Ed or Newark schools, you can't trust them even if they're Afrocentric. Yeah, because they will sell your ass out with a dashiki on to get their paycheck and pay their more. Yeah. I'm a principal, I'm a school psychologist, and I'm telling you I got some colleagues who ain't no damn good. And if you walk in their office, you would think they was Marcus Garvey, they got all these pictures on the wall, they got dashiki, they've been to Africa, and when you come in their office, they tell you how much they love black kids, and the minute you walk out that damn door, they suspending your son. And they from the same ghettos in Newark that you come from, but they went to college, got a degree, and now they think they better than <laughs> Economics. Economics. I want to close on this point. We have to do a better job of trapping the money that comes along with our African holidays. I have a big problem with the fact that white department stores make more money off Kwanzaa than all the black bookstores in America put together. We have, to, we have to stop letting white people capitalize off of our cultural products. You should be enraged that McDonald's puts kente cloth on white people to sell you McChickens during Kwanzaa. You will never see them make a caricature of Jewish holiday like that. You will never see them make a caricature of East Indian holiday like that. But they will take an African cultural product, yes, they would. an African cultural custom, and turn it into a vehicle of capitalism, and we support it. Mm -hmm. And we support it. Yeah. We have to stop doing that. The other thing we got to do, we have to build in Newark an independent black credit union. <laughs> all of you, all of you have to take your money from Wells Fargo. Yes. and take your money from the Bank of America yes. and put it into the Newark Revolutionary Independent Black People's Credit Union. Let's go. Why? Why? Because looking for donations to fund revolutions has played out. We need big money for this. Yes. Banking is big money. We used to have banks. We don't have them anymore. But a credit union is a good start because banking is so complicated, we got to build to that. But we can start a credit union. I'm doing the research on it now. Because my next step, my goal for the rest of 2014, when I go around and start these parent associations, when I come back to Newark so we can have our first meeting, I want to also start that credit union. So now you put your check in the credit union. You know why? Because in this building right now, between those of you sitting up here with me and those who are downstairs, we got about $5 million in annual income in this building right now. I believe it. Legal and illegal. <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. If we put the $5 million in this building in the same credit union, we would be able to fix up Newark. Yes. on the interest of the money. Mm. Do you realize that when it comes to finance, you depositing your paycheck in the bank is worth more to the community 
than a donation. Yes. And why? Why is that? It's because the FDIC allows a bank to loan a hundred dollars on every dollar that is deposited into their bank. Mm. Some of y'all didn't even know that. You want to know how these white men is getting these loans for Dunkin' Donuts and new hotels and building strip malls from the ground? They doing it off black people's deposit money. If I take $100 and take it to the bank right now, $100 times 100 is 100000 that they're going to loan to some white person off my $100. What? That's how banking works. They're using money that don't even exist. What if we took the same science and used it for ourselves? If you take your $500, $800 paycheck, I'll multiply your $800 paycheck times 100. How much is that? That's eight, 800,000 or 80,000? 800,000. They go 800,000 off of $800. We could build all the independent schools. We could get our own hospital. Yeah, we we can get our own supermarket, stop eating this dirty ass food that the Asians and the Latinos keep giving us. Yeah. Yeah. Spoiled ass milk and spoiled orange juice. You know what they do, right? They go to the supermarket and they buy the food that is not yet expired, but is almost expired. 